Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss our next machine learning project. Diabetes prediction using machine learning. The objective of this project is to predict whether or not a patient has diabetes. For this project, we are going to use real world data set available on Kegel. You can download this data set from Kegel or from my GitHub account. Link is given in the description of this video. Please remember in this project, we are going to use concept of machine learning pipeline. So let's get started. So let me first import pandas as PD. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here. Now our pandas library is successfully imported. So now let's load our data set as pandas data frame. So for that, let me write PD dot read underscore CSV because our data set is available in dot CSV file format with name diabetes dot CSV. Let me assign it to one variable data is equal to this statement. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here. Now our data set is successfully loaded as pandas data frame that you can see over here to explain you this project here. I have mentioned some questions that you can see over here. So now let's solve them one by one. So now our question number one. So in this question we have to display top five rows of the data set. So for that we have to use head method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here top five rows of our data set. So please remember by default this head method is displaying top five rows of the data set that you can see over here. So as you can see here our data set consists of several medical predictor variables also called as independent variables and one target also called as dependent variable outcome that you can see over here. So in this data set independent variable includes the number of pregnancies glucose blood pressure skin thickness insulin BMI diabetes pedigree function and age and this is our dependent variable also called as a target or response variable outcome. So in our target variable one represents patient is diabetic and zero represent patient is non diabetic that you can see over here. So this way we can display top five rows of the data set using head method of pandas data frame. So now our next question in this question we have to check last five rows of the data set. So for that we have to use tail method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here by default tail method is displaying last five rows of this data set that you can see over here. So by this we can able to know total how many rows are available in our data set that you can see over here. So this way we can check last five rows of the data set using tail method of pandas data frame. So now our next question in this question we have to find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set. So for that we have to use shape attribute of pandas data frame. So please remember shape is an attribute of pandas data frame. It is not a method. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is python tuple. This is at index zero and this is at index one. Let me display it in proper format number of rows data dot shape index zero this one print number of columns data dot shape to one. Let me execute this cell in our data set total. We are having this many rows in our data set total. We are having this many columns that you can see over here. So this way we can find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set using shape attribute of pandas data frame that you can see over here. So now our next question in this question we have to get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement that we can do with just one method info method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here total. We are having this many rows with this index total. We are having this many columns as you can see over here column names and in our data set we are having this many nominal values in this particular column this many nominal values in this particular column as you can see over here data type for each column here you can see the types column means in our data set two columns with floating point data type seven columns with integer data type and memory usage for our data set that you can see over here. So this way we can get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement using info method of pandas data frame that you can see over here. So now our next question in this question we have to check null values in the data set. So for that let me write data dot is null method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here 
output is pandas data frame with boolean values now let's perform sum of true values let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is 0 0 and 0 means we do not have any null value in our data set that you can see over here so this way we can check null values in our data set that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we have to get overall statistics about our data set so for that we have to use describe method of pandas data frame let me execute this set as you can see over here now let me take one column blood pressure total count is this and this is average value in this particular column blood pressure standard deviation of this particular column minimum value in this particular column and these are percentile values 25 percent 50 percent and 75 percent so in this blood pressure column 25 percent values are below 62 50 percent values are below 72 in this particular column and 75 percent values are below 80 in this particular column and you can see maximum value in this particular column same statistics you can get from other columns that you can see over here so this way we can get overall statistics about our data set using describe method of pandas data frame so as we can see here there is no missing values in this data set right but however the features like glucose blood pressure insulin skin thickness has zero values that you can see over here which is not possible so we have to replace zero values with either mean or median values of specific column so now let's first check total how many zero values are available in this particular columns so for that we have to replace this zero with n a n value means not a number so we can able to count number of missing values means number of zero values so for that let me first import numpy as np let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our numpy library is successfully imported so now let's create copy of our data set and i am going to create deep copy so we have to set deep is equal to true and let me assign it to one variable data underscore copy is equal to this statement let me execute this cell so now let me display column names and let me write data underscore copy and let me copy this column names and let me paste it over here and let me execute this cell as you can see over here now let me replace zero values available in this particular column with np dot nan not a number and let me copy this and let me paste it over here i am going to assign back let me execute this cell and let me write data underscore copy so here we are going to check null values in the data set because we have replaced zero with np dot nan so let me write data underscore copy dot is null method let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is data frame with boolean values now let's perform sum of true values as you can see over here total we are having these many zeros in this particular column glucose these many zeros in this particular column these many zeros in this particular column means we can consider this zero as null values as you can see here features like glucose blood pressure skin thickness insulin and bmi has zero values which is not possible so we are going to replace these zero values with either mean or median values but here we are going to replace zero with mean value so now let's do this so now let me take our first column glucose let me copy this column name and let me paste it over here dot replace replace zero with data and in bracket notation our column name glucose and mean and let me copy this and let me paste it over here is equal to this statement to assign it back to modify our existing data frame as you can see over here currently we are working on our data set not on the copy of our data set that you can see over here now let me take another column blood pressure let me copy and paste it over here and dot replace zero with this dot mean and let me copy this and let me paste it over here is equal to this statement to modify our existing data frame now let me take another column skin thickness let me copy this column name let me paste it over here dot replace 
zero width mean value of this particular column. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. Is equal to this statement to modify our existing data frame. Now let me take another column insulin. Let me copy. Let me paste it over here. Dot replace zero width mean and let me assign back. Let me copy. Let me paste it over here. Is equal to this statement. Now let me take another column BMI dot replace zero width mean value of this particular column. Let me assign back. Let me copy. Let me paste it over here. Is equal to this statement to modify our existing data frame. Now let me execute this cell. Now we have successfully replaced zero width mean values of specific column that you can see over here. Now our next question. In this question, we are going to store feature matrix means our independent variables in X and our target variable also called as response or dependent variable in vector Y. So let me write X is equal to data dot drop outcome and axis is equal to one and Y is equal to data in bracket notation our target variable outcome. Let me execute this cell. Let me check. Now as you can see here our independent variables are available in X. Let me check Y as you can see over here. Now our target variable also called as response or dependent variable available inside vector Y. So this way we can store feature matrix in X and response variable also called as target variable in vector Y that you can see over here. So now our next question. In this question, we are going to split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our models. So for that, let me import from sklearn dot model underscore selection. We have to import train underscore test underscore split and let me write train underscore test underscore split and here we have to pass our independent variables available in X our dependent variable available inside Y and let me set test size to 0.20 and let me set random underscore state to 42 and let me assign this to X underscore train X underscore test Y underscore train and Y underscore test is equal to this statement as you can see here two set one for training and one for testing and we have set test size to 0.20 20 means we are going to keep aside 20% data for testing purpose. So please remember we are going to train our model on X train and Y train and we will perform our prediction using X test our unseen samples and we will compare predicted results by our models with Y test that you can see over here. So this way we can split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our models. Let me execute this cell. Now our next question here. We are going to create machine learning pipeline using scikit-learn. So what does pipeline do? Please remember it chains together multiple steps output of each step is used as input to the next step. So how can we create machine learning pipeline? So please remember a machine learning pipeline can be created by putting together a sequence of steps involved in training of a machine learning model. It can be used to automate a machine learning workflow. Please remember a pipeline can involve pre-processing, feature selection, feature scaling, classification or regression and post processing. Let me show you this. So for that, let me import from sklearn dot pre-processing. Let me import standard scalar from sklearn dot linear model. Let me import logistic regression from sklearn dot neighbors let me import k neighbors classifier as you can see here we are importing different classification models because as you can see here our target variable contains two values zero or one means this is classification problem so that's why here we are importing different classification models so now let me import from sklearn dot svm let me import SVC support vector classifier from sklearn dot tree. Let me import decision tree classifier 
from sklearn dot ensemble let me import random forest classifier from sklearn dot ensemble let me import gradient boosting classifier from sklearn dot pipeline let me import pipeline let me execute this cell as you can see over here our modules are successfully imported so now let's create machine learning pipeline using sklearn as i said pipeline chains together multiple steps output of each step is used as input to the next step so now let me create first pipeline so let me give name pipeline underscore lr for this logistic regression and let me write pipeline here we can write any name let me write scalar one and here instance of standard scalar and here lr underscore classy fire you can write any name and let me create instance of logistic regression so as you can see over here as i said pipeline chains together multiple steps output of each step is used as input to the next step so output of the standard scalar used as an input of this logistic regression as you can see here i have added only two steps standard scalar for feature scaling and our model but we can add other steps as per our requirement in our pipeline so here we have used standard scalar for feature scaling as you can see here in our data set values are not in the same range that you can see over here so that's why here we have used this standard scalar which allows us to put our features into the same scale why need to do this please remember feature scaling is essential for machine learning algorithms that calculate distances between data so if not scale features with higher value range starts dominating when calculating distances the machine learning algorithms that require feature scaling are mostly k nearest neighbor neural networks support vector machine linear regression and logistic regression the machine learning algorithms that do not require feature scaling are mostly non linear machine learning algorithms like decision tree random forest adabost navbase etc so please remember any algorithm which is not distance based is not affected by feature scaling so that's why here we have performed feature scaling using standard scalar so output of this standard scalar become input of our logistic regression in our pipeline now let's create our next pipeline for k neighbors classifier so let me write pipeline scalar 2 standard scalar knn classifier you can write n an instance of k neighbors classifier now let's create our next pipeline for svc support vector classifier so pipeline in python list we have to pass arguments inside python tuple scalar 3 standard scalar svc classifier you can write n an instance of support vector classifier svc now our next pipeline for decision tree classifier decision tree classifier instance of decision tree classifier as you can see here we have created instance of decision tree classifier in our pipeline without standard scalar as i said feature scaling is not required for non linear machine learning algorithms like decision tree random forest adabost navbase etc that's why here feature scaling is not required so let me copy this statement and let me paste two times one for random forest classifier and other for gradient boosting classifier let me change it to rf random forest classifier and let's create instance of random forest classifier and here let's create instance of gradient boosting classifier and let me change it to gradient boosting classifier gbc let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our pipelines are successfully created that you can see over here so now let's create list for our created pipelines let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me copy this and let me paste it over here in our python list let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me copy this let me paste it over here let me copy this and let me paste it over here 
let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here so now let's train our pipelines so for that let me write for pipe in pipe lines this one and let me write pipe dot fit to train our pipelines on our training set available inside x underscore train and y underscore train let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our pipelines are successfully trained as you can see here only one line of code to train this many models that you can see over here so this way we can train our pipelines that you can see over here now let's find accuracy of our models to find our best model to display model names while displaying accuracy let me create python dictionary so key 0 for logistic regression 1 for k neighbors classifier 2 for support vector classifier 3 for decision tree classifier and 4 for random forest classifier and 5 for gradient boosting classifier let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here our python dictionary is successfully created now let me write for i comma model in enumerate and pipe lines and let me print test accuracy dot format and pipe underscore dict to print our model names this one and model dot model this one score on x test and y test so now let's convert it into percentage let me multiply it by 100 let me execute this cell as you can see over here test accuracy for our models that you can see over here for logistic regression k neighbors classifier support vector classifier decision tree classifier random forest classifier and gradient boosting classifier we can tune any model to increase our accuracy score so now let's tune this random forest classifier so for that let me set maximum depth to three let me execute this cell and let's train our pipe lines and let me execute this cell as you can see over here random forest classifier with 78.57 percent accuracy that you can see over here so this way we can tune our model that you can see over here so from these results we can see that random forest classifier is the best model for our data set so we are going to use random forest classifier in our production so now let's train our best model random forest classifier on entire data set so let me import from sklearn dot ensemble let me import random forest classifier let me execute this cell let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me execute this cell now let me create instance of random forest classifier now let's train our best model random forest classifier on entire data set please remember we have used train test split just to evaluate the performance of our models for production we have to train our best model on entire data set let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our best model random forest classifier is trained on entire data set and as you can see here we have set this maximum depth to 3 for this random forest classifier same we have to use in our production so let me copy and paste over here let me execute this cell so now let's train random forest classifier once again for max underscore depth is equal to 3 let me execute this cell as you can see over here as you can see over here i have created pandas data frame with different values for our features let me execute this cell and now let's perform prediction using our best model on this new data so let me write rf dot predict and new underscore data let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is one so this one represents patient is diabetic let me display it in proper format let me assign it to one variable p is equal to this statement you can use any so let me write if p 0 equal 0 let me print non dia beta else print patient is dia beta let me execute this cell as you can see over here patient with these values consider as diabetic 
that you can see over here so this way we can perform prediction on new data that you can see over here so now our next question in this question we are going to save our best model so again and again training is not required and we can perform prediction using this save model so for that let me import joblib library and let me write joblib dot dump and here we have to write instance name rf this one and here you can write any name let me write model underscore joblib underscore dia bitis you can write any let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our model is successfully saved with this name in future we can perform prediction using this save model let me show you this so for that let me write joblib dot load and here we have to pass this name let me copy this name and let me paste it over here let me assign it to one variable model is equal to this statement let me execute this cell as you can see over here now our saved model is successfully loaded so now let's perform prediction using this saved model let me show you this so model dot predict on this new data this one let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is one which represents patient is diabetic that you can see over here so this way we can save our model so again and again training is not required and we can perform prediction using this save model that you can see over here so now our next question here i have created gui exactly same way as we have created for our previous projects i'm sure you must be knowing this right because we have created it from scratch that you can see over here so now let me execute this cell and let me execute this cell as well as you can see over here gui for our project diabetes prediction using machine learning so now let's perform prediction using this gui let me enter 6 Let me press this button predict as you can see over here this patient is diabetic that you can see over here exactly same result that you can see over here so this way we can create gui for our machine learning project that you can see over here hope you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like this video smash that like button thank you very much for watching this video take care bye bye see you in the next video